Now, normally we kick this hour off doing the most comprehensive sports news bulletin package that you will get on any broadcast medium in this country. But Lachlan on hold for a second because our good mate Greg Martin from Triple M Brisbane he joins us. And, Mato, we just had Larko on. Mato and Larko. He is such a prince of a man. I, I rate him as being, in terms of promoting his sport, in terms of being an expert commentator, a uh, sideline man, the very best in the business. Do you love him in the supercars? Yeah, mate. I worked uh, with Larko doing the supercars for about two years. I don't think there's a better, you nailed it, no better expert analyst uh, uh, taking an idiot like me about, uh, you know, in terms of cars inside a vehicle and explaining things. It's quite incredible. He is the best there is. Was he, was he all right for a chat? Oh, he's brilliant, mate. He stayed for 20 minutes. Look, you know, and it, it's just that... He, 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 you're exactly right. He, he talks to you like you're a human being. He, he, even though we're all numbies, we don't know anything about it. He explains it so beautifully and so simply. And I just love the fact that, look, a car roars into the pits or whatever thing, they're throwing petrol and tyres around. The guy's got his face <laughs> and his microphone right beside it, you know? <laughs> Mate, some of their access to... Uh, because those supercar drivers, they are known here in Australian sport as the most accessible... Um, to uh, easiest to get hold of, you know how football players. Oh no, I'm too important. Yeah, no, no, no. Day off today. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Not them. They know that talking in the media buys their their seat, their bum on a seat that they drive around in. So all that costs very, it costs a lot. So they know they've got to provide access, and he gets the best of the best. Did you watch Bathurst this year? Yeah, uh, or some of it, and probably not the whole day. Well, we actually life. saw. No, we were actually flying to France actually, so we saw we saw most of it as that night as we're flying oh, out. Yeah. I know motor racing is for everyone, but their camera work is is quite simply the best of any sporting event in Australia. It is extraordinary the access and uh, and the camera work. So, mate, that's I'm not a big motor motor sports fan, but I watch him and Scafey, who does the commentary. Those two and the camera work are just superb. All right, I know that you earned a shite load of money when you were playing rugby, even though it was all amateur, it was all brown bag. But is Reese Walsh deserving as your? So you've got Corey Parker, you've got Mrs. Parker is on your show right now. Corey Parker said yes. that that that, that, that Reese boy should get paid over a million bucks and be the highest paid Bronco ever. Has that received favour amongst Broncos fans in Brisbane? Yeah, it's easy to say when you're not signing the check. Yes. I can say, yeah, he deserves one point six million. Uh, um, my worry is, mate, yes, he is the best player in the Broncos. They've got to hang on to him. It will hit a million dollars because otherwise there'll be someone else who will offer him 1.3. So, geez, he's come a long way since that season, you know, the season before last at the Warriors. Yep. Yes, he's good enough. If they've got the money and they're going to let, let, let go of a couple of old blokes, they'll, they'll have to find the money because he ain't going nowhere. He is the number one. They did the list of the 50 most important people in rugby league, okay, last week. He's number one. And because of... Because of one thing, not his good look, no. his beautiful eyes and his beautiful thighs. Apart from that, it's his ability to drag these young girls into the there game. His TikTok and Instagram accounts, he's got more than any other rugby league player. And that's why they need to pay him lots of money. In, where else? He's in the perfect place. A one-team town I'm still going to call Brisbane because the Dolphins are on the edge. Um, with two million people in it and everyone... Everyone loves him, and he's engaging women of all ages. Okay, so, so the Brisbane Courier okay. Mail this year, before the grand final, did not put out over four separate days a different piece of his anatomy that you could stick together with sticky tape and put on the wall, did they? They didn't do it with the grizzled old front rower, did they? No. The girl sitting next to me at, at Triple M's has the desk next to me. She built him from the floor <laughs> floor <laughs> for a rough. And when the groin came, she was most excited, then the torso and then the face. She was hugging him. Hard. It was it's pathetic, but that's that's if, if it takes that for girls to watch footy, that's what the NRL wants because more eyeballs equals more money. Yeah, it's like Tay-Tay bringing the fans to the NFL. Let's talk yeah. a couple of cricket things. Um, all right. Does anyone, good, care, does anyone care about the T20 series against India? I mean, does anyone care about that? Even though the big show put on a big show, does anyone care about the T20 now you've won the World Cup? All right, I'm supposed to closely follow all sports for our men's radio show, etc. Mm -hmm. And after we were 2-0 down, I could not give a stuff. So, uh, no, everyone just knows it's a way for the Indians to make a lot of money and then pass little dribbles of it on, onto us. And the boys know. Did you see we sent... Uh, the only one still over there, Glenn Maxwell flew home straight after he made that turn. So the only one still there for the fourth of these T20 matches is um, Travis Head. Oh, have they but found him? Did they find he, him? I I think he's been too drunk to fly home. So <laughs> they left him there. Mate, no one cares. You know, the T20 circus keeps on going. International T20. 
uh, if it's not a World Cup, is, is complete silliness. But uh, can I give you one? So could you imagine if the Indians beat us in that one-day World Cup final, there would have been a street parade through every major city in India and 20 million people would have been there. Okay. Would that be acceptable? Oh, you understand that? And totally, 20 billion probably, yep. The World Cup came home to Sydney the other day. Pat Cummins and Mitch Stark took it around the SCG uh, at lunch break on a Sheffield Chill game. The Journo estimated there were 42 people at the ground and they, they walked and did a full lap at the SCG and there was no one there. No. Just showing, they knew how stupid it was. They were cacking themselves the whole time. Here's our wonder. Here's our World Cup parade in front of 40 people at the SCG. It was just miserable. Before I ask about it, whether anyone gives stuff about the Big Bash, Marta is with us. Just on that, Travis Head being, mm. too, being too drunk to fly back. I've got a little tale to tell you. So we were in Vegas at the tour fight mm. in 2000. I had a really good mate of mine. And uh, we'd been just on the on the just the Raz for about three or four days. A- anyway, he was still in the same polyester leisure suit that he'd attended the fight with. I, I I basically had to carry him to the airport. He had to fly back to London, right? So he's on a plane back to yeah. London, and he had his passport in his top pocket. Thank God, because we get to the counter and the the girl behind the counter, lady behind the counter, is going, "Is he okay?" I'm going, "He's fine. He's perfectly fine." He, de- "Where's your bag, sir?" I said, "Jesus, mate, where's your bag?" And he said, "Oh, that guy took it." I said, "What guy?" And he said, the guy outside the hotel. And so there's a guy outside the hotel, a Mexican bloke who just walked past. And I remember the guy. And he said, can I take your bag, sir? And my mate Tim just handed him his bloody bag. The guy walked off. We've never seen him since. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Isn't it? I love it. Uh, hey, we play it. this Boxing Day test against you guys. And it's just been mass media coverage here. We're so excited. Are you excited? The Kiwis are coming. Because remember what you did to us last time. That's right. Mm. Um, I'm sorry. I failed to know this was occurring. I thought... Pakistan was coming to Australia to play us. No, it's in three you, years' time, mate. I mean, <laughs> in New Zealand, things are so what? slow. We celebrate stuff what? that happens in three years' time. Oh, please, please. Well, don't even bother coming. We're invincible in the Boxing Day test because it's it's our Boxing Day. It's the most important test of the year to us. So, no, you're no chance. And Three years. Can you stop talking nonsense? Okay, I know. I mean, can you imagine going home to Mrs. Marta and saying, we're doing this in three years' time? I mean, that's what she does to you. You're going, I don't care. What do you mean three years? I can't even remember what we're doing tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing this. Uh, oh, actually, no, I'm going to lunch this uh, Well, how did that uh, go last week yeah. at the 17th? Because you're off. This is, this is the best thing about golf. You can, oh. st- you can stand on a hole. The players are coming towards you. You're drinking, you're gambling, and you're just heckling. Oh, oh. when did I speak to you? Did I speak to you before I went to the golf? Before, yeah, before you went. Oh, all right. Well, I can't remember a lot of what happened at the end of it, but it was one hell of a day. You're right. It was gambling. There was a group of 10 of us betting. I reckon we were betting $5 notes on nearest the pin for everyone. So it's five over. And then there was there was free. I, I don't go to corporate suites. There was free beer, free alcoholic ginger beer, and you're allowed to heckle. There was music. It was like a nightclub. <laughs> so the gentle gentle golf is gone. You're able to heckle if they'd lost you money. If yes. you, you, you lost your $5 because you're bloke you'd either pick the first, second or third guy hitting off and it was a par three hole. If he lost your money, you just leaned over the fence and haggled him. <laughs> hey, mate, that was rubbish. You call yourself a professional. <laughs> I found myself going to the lowest common denominator of idiot that I've been watching. Oh, fantastic. I became that person. It was the best. Uh, I love golf. Well, no, I don't love golf, but I did love that golf. God, it was good. Two quick yeah. things then. Um, the anniversary of Phil Hughes' death this week, your Australian cricketers really learned from that, didn't they? They softened their attitudes. They became a lot more sensitive and that, a lot more caring, didn't they, after that? Are you being sarcastic? Well, just, I mean, good God. I mean, as well, I say, a whole team starts with a T and rhymes with wanker. Oh, sorry, it is wanker. That's right, apart from Travis Head. <laughs> Mate, um, yeah, I know. They played a bit of that the other day. It's sort of... The best thing that did was bring those um, helmet straps in, and I guess it made the game, but there was just a terrible accident. The other yeah. bloke that did it, Sean Abbott, still in the Australian team, so how would he have been feeling the other day? Well, I was Martin. going to ask about him, actually. Yeah, geez, so how do you recover uh, from something like that? Yeah. Oh, people ask him occasionally. I think everyone gives him a lot of space because it's been pretty tough with him. It took him probably two years to bowl properly again, so because he was worried he'd kill somebody else. It was Yeah, it was a really sad, sad thing. I spoke to a couple of guys. They reckoned that he was never... That was bad coaching. No one ever um, corrected that problem, and it was always going to happen that he was going to get those edges into his neck and stuff. So, well, I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right, well, let's, end, it, let's end on a happy note then. Uh, Sam Kane has yeah. brought it up again, the old chestnut about All Blacks playing overseas, being picked for the national team. Do you guys have an issue with this with your players? Oh, of course we do. We've got the guitar rule where we're only allowed three overseas players, which is ridiculous because now 
Super Rugby's collapsing before our very eyes. Is, yeah. that, is that a generally help? Yeah, yeah totally, mate. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to become like the Australian cricket, uh, soccer team where all our players will be overseas and we'll just get together the few days before a test match and that'll be the Australian rugby team, I would, I would figure. That's where it'll go. Um, there's no dough. So anyone, like, w- what managers don't want to park you in places where you're not making enough dough. So overseas where the money is, the manager will take his cut and you'll be, and, and they'll have to open it up. Well, the All Blacks will probably start with going, they'll go something like the guitar rule to start, but we've got to open it up because we ain't got enough good players. We'll have to say, if you're good enough and you're playing in France, England or wherever, or Japan, you can be picked for the Wallaby. So, which will just mean more people will go overseas because they'll go, oh, it's no worries, I won't lose my Wallaby jersey. I'll go over and make, you know, 1.2 million overseas and still play for the Wallabies. Great. That, so be careful, but that's where it'll end up going. Okay, appreciate your yeah. time as always, mate. Thank you so much, Greg. Greg Martin with Ask Marto every single Thursday around about this time.